if I'm going to be the conduit for people visualizing these creatures as living, breathing beings, I have to get it right. So this is a Neanderthal from a site called Shanadar in what is now Iraq and uh, discovered in the 50s, I think. And it really changed the way, started changing the way we think about Neanderthals. And of course, a caveman image is very difficult to get rid of for some reason. And um, probably the last 10 headlines you've read about Neanderthals is that they weren't as stupid as we thought. It takes me two months of building structures over a cast of the skull just to come up with the, the face, and then I have to mold it and cast it, of course. But it takes two months of building every muscle, every fat body or gland in the face, and I have, have to work out the likely dimensions of all of that. I definitely have to be very much an artist and very much a scientist when I work on this kind of project. Be and I have to basically switch heads when I'm working. I have to, I have to make sure that I'm paying attention to aesthetic concerns, um, things like facial expression and that sort of thing. And I also have to make sure I'm, I'm, uh, I'm true to the science that I've been able to turn on. In my training and also in my early years of my art career, I was doing a lot of paleontology-focused art in a sort of general way, but my first love was always human evolution, because I think of the evolution of humans on Earth as one of the most remarkable points in the history of life. 